Hello, it's me, Kyle. Welcome back to Give Paws Hobby. I have my big stack of brood stuff now that I have the Marauders expansion. This won't be a long video. It's just going to be me showing you how I store it in these three boxes. Um, so let's move these off to the side. Start with the little box. Unsurprisingly, in the hirelings box are all the hirelings. Um, <clears throat> in addition, well, I have all of the hirelings in their own little baggies. I've put the hireling dice as well as all the little bits to make the hirelings possible and the different uh what you call them landmarks <laughs> um into this bag so this is kind of i've heard people refer to this as you know the what type of game of root would you like to play box because i also have um the uh, exiles and parson deck along with my Vagabond pack, which is where I store my base deck. Um, I also have my Rootbot priority markers, along with my Ruin and uh, just the normal items to be crafted, and my dice in here. Uh, I might pull out these priority markers into a different thing to go with the bots, but for me, I play with the bots enough that I kind of just want those along with everything else. Um, and then in here, I have all of the different uh, hireling cards, um, as well as the different landmark um, you know, rules sheets, the hireling rules, and I just had some of the new Vagabond or Vagabot cards here um, so I could study them for an upcoming video. Bum, bum, bum. So that box is kind of where I would start. What do I want to make the game of Root look like? Um, after that, in uh, in a normal expansion box. For me, I chose the Clockwork 2 expansion because I love this artwork so much. I have my various rule books here. Um, so Law of Root Botics, Law of Root, all the different ones that came with the expansion, which I probably don't need to have on hand at all times because these are the, the big ones I would actually be using. And then inside, I have um, the Rootbot cards separated by actual expansion. So here was the one. Here were the ones that came with uh, Clockwork Two. Here are the ones from Clockwork One. Um, just to, I didn't have a lot of space here to work with, so I couldn't put them in one bag. So now I just have to remember which set they came out with. Here is where I have um, just the Vagabond things, um, the quest cards, and all the different. Uh, character cards and then here are all the rest of the player character cards so all the factions that have cards that go along with them fit into this one nicely again um, if it was taller I would have these together but it's kind of nice I mean there's a lot of cards that go with Vagabond so they go in their own thing um, then I just call, you might call me a heathen but I keep my resin markers just in a bag they clunk around and I do have uh, marked the logos um, the symbols so they're a little bit uh, easier to identify. <clears throat> I use the uh, mountain path uh, like pieces here to keep the map in place so it doesn't kind of slide around. And here is my mountain and lake map. Um, now you'll notice I didn't have a map for the autumn, uh, the, the base game map in here because I have the neoprene mat for that. So this is able to be done because I'm not storing two maps in here. And eventually, uh, once this gets more worn out, I'll pick up the mat for that as well. And then I'll just have even more room to work with. Now, critically, this is something I added recently. Um, so I just picked up some, I don't know what you would call this, um, just like a thing. <laughs> I should have thought of that word before I started filming. Um, but just so I could pick these up without having to like squeeze my fingers in there or like dump it upside down. But these are all the bots now. Um, so again, kind of working, I guess, whichever direction you want. to. Th this way would be, what do I want the map to look like? And then we would choose what the players are doing. And you could do the very opposite and start with what we want the players to play as, and then we'll figure out what the map looks like. But anyways, here are all the bots. And when I put them back inside, I just kind of pull up on this and make sure it's nice and snug. As you'll notice, there's not a lot of room in this box, so I want to avoid shoving my fingers down there and messing it up as best I can. And I plop that on top, put these back to keep the map from shifting 
I kind of have to spread these out just a little bit. Um, adding in that other little box definitely did make a little bit more room for me to work with, but it's still, still not a ton. Um, sometimes these clearing markers I need to sort of shift just a bit. Let's see how that works. There we go. Only a teeny bit of box lift, and if I push down, then it goes away. And then, last but not least, <clears throat> the actual uh, box that the players are going to be pulling from. So again, I have this little cord, or again, whatever you would call it, um, and I just take it out. So here's all the player boards. We're not in any order right now because every time I start to do that, I realize they're going to get disorganized sooner rather than later. Um, I have all of the geek up bags from BGG. I know some people have <clears throat> either 3D printed or Etsy purchased uh, like balsa wood or plastic or whatever it may be. I really like these bags just because more Kyle Farron artwork is never a bad thing. So I'm sure once they, uh, or I'm sure th these will be coming out for the Marauder faction soon. Um, I would imagine they may even be coming out for the hirelings, and when that happens, I might even pick them up for that too, just because I like the look of these so much. Just the color of, of root is what makes it so beautiful, and I just love that it starts right from the bag that you go ahead and hand to the player. You say, here you go, you are the cats, and they're immediately kind of into that uh, like state of mind. Um, so again, I just need to put that over, and now this box, as you can see, is kind of bowed out from the amount of times I've just like and ripped things out that way. So I'm trying to make sure this box lasts because it's critical to have this like taller box um, for any of this to work. Now there's a little bit more room here for when and if Leader Games puts out a couple more factions. Um, I'm running out of room down below, um, so I'll figure that out when we get there. But this one has more than enough room, so there's no box lift. And as you can see, um, you know, I actually might even look at this. Here you are, seeing it here first. I'm gonna change where the rule books go because I have more room in this big box than I do that smaller one. Bum ba bum. No box lift. No box lift. No box lift. So that's how I store root. Again, um, this board I have here just for kind of recording purposes. Um, I do unpictured here is my rolled up original map, uh, the neoprene mat that would go with me wherever I would be playing root. But that's how I store it. Um, it's not the most economical space wise, but I think it's pretty darn close. Um, and yeah, hope that's helpful. And it's more root to your table. Thanks for taking a pause to give pause. I'll see you next time.